Okay, so now that we've covered the colony summary, let's talk industry. So this is where you do all your construction. Um, up here, it shows you what the construction capacity is for the colony. At the moment, we have 800 conventional industry and we have 800 annual build points. Everything is basically done in annuals. So this is 800 build points per year that Earth is capable of producing with its 800 CIs. Over here, we have a list of what we can build. Now, because we're a conventional empire, it's not a lot. So we can build a cargo shuttle station, a commercial shipyard complex, a deep space tracking station, a financial center, a ground force construction complex, infrastructure, low G infrastructure, a maintenance facility, military academy, a naval headquarters, naval shipyard complex, ordnance transfer station, a refueling station, a research facility, and a spaceport. Down here, you can see what is actually required to build what you have selected. So a spaceport requires 3,000 wealth, and it also requires 400 uranium, 400 corbamide, 1,400 boronide, 400 macassium, and 400 iridium. You can also see what's actually available. You'll never see your wealth available, but it's up here. So this is what is going to be consumed throughout the construction of the spaceport. If we go up here in infrastructure, two wealth, one duranium, one macassium. So infrastructure is obviously a hell of a lot cheaper to build than a spaceport. Uh, wealth is also a handy summary because by default, unless you modify it, uh, the wealth is equal to the total number of resources spent. So infrastructure, one duranium, one macassium, wealth is two. Financial center, 120 corbamide, 120 wealth. So the amount of wealth spent is always going to be equal to corbamide in the vanilla game. I'm not going to talk too much about what these actually do until we get actual trans-Newtonian tech. Um, that way I can talk about what they all do. Uh, you also have this drop down here, which gives you different categories. So ordnance will let you build missiles. So you can see that our 800 CI only provide 400 build points for ordnance. Uh, so they only provide, so they provide half the capacity for missile production. Uh, they provide a quarter of the capacity in fighter production. Fighters are any ship that's more than 500 tons. Um, components, you, so some components can, can be built by industry directly. So, for example, the refueling system, the ordnance transfer system, maintenance storage bays. There's a bunch of different components. Some, some things can't, some, a lot of things can. Um, and we'll talk about that later. But you have components here. Components are built using factory production, and they follow the same queue. But you can pre-build components using industry here. Um, shipyards can then use those components uh, to make build ships a bit faster. And space stations allow you to build space stations. Obviously, we don't have any space stations, missiles, or fighters designed, so that's blank. But uh, this tells you what... Uh, so this, le this lets you select something to build, and this tells you how much it costs. Over here, we have a list of um, what's actually being built at this uh, base. So, for example, if we want to build some infrastructure, we select the infrastructure, we select how many items we want. So let's go one. So if we want to build one infrastructure. This tells us how, what, how much of our total construction capacity we want to allocate towards the, this project. So I want to go for 100, and we hit Create. Okay. So, now that we've built this, we can see construction infrastructure. Amount 1, capacity is 100%. Production rate is 800. Item cost is 2. And completion date is 1st of January, year 1. Um, that's today, because we're producing 800 a year, and it only costs 2. So, it's going to take less than a day to build it. Keep in mind, this completion date does not take uh, the production cycle into account. So even with a five-day production cycle, so if, if we had a five-day production cycle, the completion date will still be January 1st. But if we went a day ahead, then it would say January 2nd. So it would always be the same day until January 1st to roll around, 5th rolled around, the production cycle kicked in, and then the infrastructure would be built. And all this, and the... Five days of production would basically be wasted. 
So we would basically waste four days of production. Um, this tells you whether it's paused or queued. So one infrastructure is way overkill. So we've got two options. We can either add more infrastructure. So we add number of items and hit modify. And now we're producing one. And that means, not, not, not the, you know, okay. So now we're producing 100 infrastructure. That's going to take until the 2nd of April. So it's going to take about four months to get this 100 infrastructure built. Alternatively, we can reduce how much of our industry we are allocating. So, for example, if we go back down to one and drop it down to 10%, we can see that it's now going to take 10 days for our 80 production rate to build our one infrastructure. Um, you also see that because we have less than 100% of our production used, we have 90% of our uh, production in unused construction. Um, this obviously uh, is a handy indicator so that if you now want to build something else, you don't have to do the math. Like if you have 10 different projects all using up a bunch of different percentages, uh, especially weird ones that are not round tens, uh, this lets you fill out the rest easier. Um, <clears throat> so we can also pause the, the queue. We can also bump it up and down. So if we wanted to, for example, create a low gravity construction. Um, so, we got, so we got these two. You can see low gravity costs four, so it's going to take twice as long. Uh, we can, for example, pull it up and down the queue. So if we wanted low gravity to get our resources first, we can bump it up. Now, it doesn't matter because we have nothing queued. But, for example, if we uh, wanted to, say, bump this up to 100, and we've got to pull this out of the queue. So, so one important thing to remember is if you take the bottom most in construction project and pull it down queue, it will actually pull it out of construction. And you need to do that because if you and if you take the topmost one, it will put it into construction. For example, it, it, because I have these two, I can't set this one to be 100 because it will put the total construction um, over 100% and the game won't let you do that. So if you want to put something to 100% and you have multiple projects in play, you have to pull the rest out of construction and then you can modify it back up to 100%. And now this will sit in the queue because there's not enough capacity. Um, this really shouldn't be there anymore. Anyway, that will go away once if we go ahead and if we go ahead and refresh that, that should actually go away. Okay. Doesn't matter. Not important. Anyway. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, don't don't fiddle with the unused. The game doesn't update something sometimes, so just keep that in mind. Um if we went through a production, if we went through a production cycle or did some time, that'll probably go away. So yeah, so that's how to handle that. If you're building fighters, you can select which fleet they go into, and we'll talk. And once we get to talking about fighters, we'll talk about that. The same thing with the space station, so we can tell which fleet they're being added to, because fighters get built very very quickly, and space stations and fighters are the only things that you can build here that have to go into a fleet because they're space object um so you need to know so you need to tell the game which fleet to build the fighters and space stations into so when they're built uh, that's the fleet that they will go into uh we also going to just cancel these two because they're trash there we go so that's actually gone away now all right uh last things on our industry that we need to talk about is our fuel refinery and maintenance facilities so our our conventional industry is giving us 40 fuel refineries worth of capacity which is producing 1.6 million liters of fuel, and we have reserves of zero. And our 800 capacity is providing five maintenance facilities worth of maintenance. Now, maintenance facilities do two things. First of all, they give you capacity for ship maintenance. So with the five facilities we have available, we can maintain 5,000 total ship tonnage. So that means one 5,000 ton ship or five 1,000 ton ships. So all ships maintained have to be within that capacity. We'll talk about maintenance later. Um, and they all, maintenance facilities also produce MSP. MSP is, stands for maintenance supply points, and it's what ships use to maintain and repair themselves using damage control and maintenance. So we have no stockpile, because obviously we started with none, but this will slowly build up. 
if uh, now fuel is well we'll talk about fuel in a bit but fuel is made from soria maintenance facilities is made from a couple of different things so if we run out of those resources or if we feel like we have more than enough we can stop that production that will stop the consumption of those resources and stop any production um so that will let, let, let us stop and start those like if you have a hundred thousand msp in stock you probably don't need any more just yet <clears throat> so that is the industry tab 